It's the 25th of April today. We're around a month on from spring drilling here at Harper Toon. We drilled 30 hectares of Laureate spring malting barley across four fields. And this is the final field that we drilled on the 1st of April. You can see it's coming through the ground well. It's, uh, it's all rowing up nicely. Um, I was a bit concerned at drilling time that we were short of moisture and was looking for a little bit of rainfall um, just after we finished drilling and we were very fortunate to get that. We've had about 30 millimetres of rain between drilling and now so that's really helped the crop come away well and all the other fields are, are looking similar so I'm really pleased with that. Um, it's all about now trying to maximise the potential of what we've got here and um, both in terms of yield and grain quality. So the focus for us in that respect at the moment is on crop nutrition and just trying to ensure that the crop has adequate access to all the nutrients it's likely to need through the growing season. I've been over the field once already with the fertilizer spreader. We've applied a blend of nitrogen, phosphate, potash and sulfur, uh, a lot of which is still sat on the surface, unfortunately. That was um, almost two weeks ago now. So again, we could do with a bit more rain. Um, but I'll shortly come back on with some ammonium nitrate just to follow up uh, and, and finish the fertilizer spreading with that. We would typically apply around 118 kilos a hectare of nitrogen to our spring malting barley. We tend to find that gives us a good balance between um, the yield that we get and still managing to meet the malting specification, not having too much nitrogen in the grain at the end of the season. So. We'll apply slightly less than that this year, just given the, the price of fertilizer at the moment. I think it's fairly well documented that um, fertilizer prices are significantly higher than they've been in recent years. I think nitrogen, for example, is four or five times what it was maybe a year or 18 months ago. So that's a significant challenge for us as growers to try and mitigate the, the risk of that on the business and the volatility. And um, we've just got to try and use what we, we do apply as efficiently as we can. Uh, an example of something that we've been using this year to help with that this time is uh, an end tester from Yara. It's a handheld device that measures the chlorophyll content of the leaf. And that helps you to fine tune your um, final nitrogen applications in winter cereals. It's not something that we can use on the spring barley just yet. They've not got a calibration for that. but. Hopefully it'll come in, in a few years time. We, uh, we're also constantly trying to build the natural fertility in our soils. And um, I mentioned cover crops in the last video as a way of trying to do that. And um, we're growing those now. We also apply around a thousand ton of cattle manure each year across the farm. That comes from our beef enterprise from when the cattle are housed in the winter time. Uh, that'll go on to some ground ahead of oilseed rate drilling in the autumn. We've got a midden in this field behind us. It will go on to a couple of the neighboring fields uh, next door to us. And uh, we get that analyzed in the lab before we spread it, just to see what the nutritional content is. And again, that helps us just to make sure that we're applying the, uh, the optimum amount of bagged nitrogen afterwards. The field that I'm stood in just now is also slightly different to the other three spring barley fields that we've drilled in that it's been under sown with a grass and clover seed mixture. We do that with one of our fields every year as a way of establishing grass and getting that into the arable rotation. So this field will be in grass for the next three years after the, the spring barley has been cut. We sow the spring barley seed conventionally as we do with the other fields and then a day or two later roughly we'll come across it with a quad bike and spinner on the back and we'll spin the um, clover and grass seed onto the surface and then roll that in with a set of Cambridge rolls and it comes away at the same time as the spring barley. You can hopefully see it coming through um, with the crop at the moment. So come harvest time, we'll take the barley off, we'll bale the straw, and we should hopefully be left with a nice grass sward underneath, um, which this time next year should look like the field next door to us, uh, which was spring barley under sown last year and is now a nice thick field of grass. So that will be cut for silage and then grazed by the cattle later on in the year. That should help us reduce the amount of nitrogen we put onto this field. Clover as a legume is able to fix a bit of atmospheric nitrogen and pull that down into the soil. So the spring barley should benefit uh, from some of that as well 
and allow us to, to cut back our application rate slightly. In a week or two's time, we're probably going to have to shift focus onto crop protection and start to think about weed control and disease control. So in the next video, we'll, we'll discuss that in a bit more detail and talk about some of the measures we're taking to address those issues.